In this session we shall look at the effect of idle time on our direct labour variances. Now, as we saw um, previously, the direct labour variances um, try and explain the difference between the amount that we actually spent on direct labour and the amount we should have spent on labour in producing the units that we actually made. Now, typically we split that overall variance into two figures. We calculate a direct labour efficiency variance, which is a measure of whether or not um, employees worked um, efficiently. Um, and we also calculate a direct labour labor rate variance, and this is whether or not we're paying our employees at a higher or lower rate per hour than we expected. Now it's possible to split um, the direct labour efficiency variance um, further um, and this is where we record idle time. Idle time is when we're paying for labour but we're getting nothing in return. Now this can happen for a variety of reasons. It might be because we've had a breakdown, so staff are uh, sat around being paid for doing nothing. It might be because there's been a fire so that um, staff are unable to do their work. Or it might be that there are bottlenecks in production. So there are people ready and waiting to do work, but they're waiting for goods to be sent to them so that they can start. Now the idle time variance can be calculated when idle time is measured and recorded. Some businesses do this, some do not. Um, idle time variance, it measures the cost associated with that idle time that's been incurred. Now, in this session, on in this course, we're not going to consider situations where idle time is expected. Um, instead, we will always have um, idle time as being unexpected and as a consequence it's always going to be an adverse variance. Um, where we do calculate an adverse time variance, uh, sorry, an idle time variance, we're also going to have a minor change to the way that we calculate our direct labour efficiency variance. So let's have a look at the calculations. First of all, we have our standard labour hours for actual production at the standard hourly rate. That's the amount that should have been paid um, for producing the actual amount that we, uh, that we made. Secondly, we calculate the actual labour hours worked at the standard hourly rate. Now when we're looking at the hour, uh, hours worked, we ignore any hours that are idle. Thirdly, we calculate the actual labour hours paid for at the standard hourly rate. So this is going to include any idle time. And lastly, we have our actual direct labour cost incurred. The difference between our first two uh, figures, that is going to be our direct labour efficiency variance. The difference between our second two figures, this is our idle time variance. And idle time variance can also be calculated just by taking the number of idle hours and multiplying them by the standard hourly rate. The difference between um, our last two figures is the direct labour rate variance. So let's have a look at an illustration. So let's have a look at the scenario. Well our standard labour costs are as follows. The time required to take one unit is two hours. The standard pay rate is £12 per hour. And last month our figures were as follows. We produced 1,800 units. 
the direct labour costs were £44,500. 3,720 hours were paid for and 3,560 hours were worked, uh, the difference being due to a production line breakdown. So we've now got all of the figures required in order to calculate all of our different uh, labour variances. So we're going to make our calculations. First of all, our standard labour hours for actual production at the standard hourly rate, that's 1800 units at 2 hours per unit, that then gives me the total number of hours that I require to produce all of those units, and we charge that at £12 per hour. So I put that into my calculator and I get a total cost of £43,200. That's the amount that I should have incurred. Secondly, I can calculate the actual labour hours worked at the standard hourly rate. Well, we actually worked 3,560 hours and each of those should have been paid at £12 per hour. So my total is £42,720. Thirdly, I can calculate the actual labour hours paid at the standard hourly rate. So that's 3,720 hours at £12 per hour, giving me a total of £44,640. And lastly, I have the actual uh, direct labour costs incurred of £44,500. I now have all of the figures that I require in order to calculate my variances. So the difference between the first two figures, that's my direct labour efficiency variance. And that works out at £480 favourable. So that means that I, um, my uh, direct labour have worked faster in producing those 1800 units than I had, pre uh, I had expected them to. Secondly, I can calculate my idle time variance. This is the um, difference between the labour hours worked and the labour hours paid for at the standard hourly rate. So that works out at £1920. Um, and that's always going to be an adverse variance. And lastly, I can calculate my direct labour rate variance and this is the difference between the actual labour hours paid for at the standard hourly rate and the actual direct labour costs incurred and that's £140 favourable and it's favourable because the um, actual direct labour costs incurred was slightly lower than the uh, labour hours paid for at the standard rate.